Hi, it's Nick Davis from Nick Davis Sports Psychology, and today I'm with my friend uh, Wayne Elcock in his ringside boxing, Mad Dog Boxing Shop. So thanks for joining me today, or for me joining you today, rather, Wayne. No problem. Um, could you tell me a, a brief history about what you've accomplished um, so far in your boxing career and your shop as well? Yeah, as a fighter, uh, as a fighter, uh, I won the English, British, Commonwealth, a version of the world title, and also challenged for the, the IBF world title. Wow. Uh, Came out of the game in the end uh, with uh, 19 wins out of 23 fights and the four defeats was two British title fights and two world title fights, so never really lost at the lower level. Uh, I came out as mandatory for the, the British and Commonwealth. Uh, the great thing about it for me was really I retired from the sport rather than the sport retiring me. Uh, I thought it was the right time to move on. Uh, I'd accomplished everything that I wanted to accomplish when I turned over as a professional and I turned over quite late at that. But, uh, it was always about, and I think it's something that I carried through right the way through my life, really, uh, proving I could do anything, really. And it wasn't about proving to you or proving, it was proving to myself yeah. that anything was really possible. Uh, I've always been massive on that. You tell me I can't do something, then I'll try my damn hardest to, to make sure I do it. Uh, and don't get me wrong, there are certain things out there that are out of reach for anybody. Yeah. But uh, if I knew that it was just a matter of hard work, dedication, discipline, and patience to see it through, yeah. uh, then I would keep plugging away. And I think that's that was really testament to really my boxing career where I took time out through my career. Yeah, uh, started it, off. It wasn't a straight line, was it? There was some. Not. It was a very. It was, it was very checkered. Yeah. If I'm being honest, I've done well to do what I did in terms of titles and so forth. I think I, I turned over and I went uh, free on the bounce. Uh, won them quite comfortably. I was one of the rising prospects, uh, and then uh, we had some fallouts. Uh, the, you know, the promotional side where Frank Maloney who was my then manager decided to leave and, and uproot and go and work with Sports Network uh, Panics decided that they wanted to keep me on board uh, so they upped my money uh, and me as a young kid and obviously yeah you go it's more money I'll just I'll stay with you then it's not yeah. a problem let's stay here end up not fighting for uh, it was about 16, 17 months wow. uh, with no competition whatsoever so it was like a slow burner and at the time when I turned professional at uh, 24 very late in the game. Mm. It's time really you can't afford to lose. But So I was on a real catch up when I came back. So the first fight back uh, for Sports Network after this long break was uh, against a guy who's had 15 and only lost one. Wow. And it was my fourth fight and not been boxing for 17, 18 months. Uh, I came through that and, and obviously then went on then to, to, to challenge uh, against Yuri Serenko who beat Gary Lockett and Gary Lockett at the time was unbeaten. And that led to the, the title shot against uh, Anthony Farnell. Yeah. Supporting Ricky Hatton there and winning the version of the WBU world title at middleweight. Yeah. Uh, then having a, a loss after that fight uh, against Lawrence Murphy uh, in my first defence, which was unfortunate for me with a lot of things uh, at the time planned for me, going down the WBO route, fighting Hector Valais, and there was a lot of stuff being going on. I think I was looking past Lawrence, if I'm being honest, at the time, thinking I've, I've kind of made it now, God. Yeah. This is easier than what I thought. Uh, but anyway, the wheels came off and uh, I wasn't really getting on with the, the setup at Sports Network. Didn't feel my career was going anywhere after this loss. I was gone from being like top of the pile to like you're boxing at the end of the night, half twelve at your call when yeah. everyone's gone home. Sky's not really interested in filming it and uh, it, was, it was a crazy experience really. And People don't understand like the, 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 there was many a times during that period that you seem like you're training and it's what am I training for? Yeah. Uh, and you've got to have a lot of self-belief at them times uh, to get through it because there's many a times and you just feel like you know I was literally spending more on expenses uh, to get myself wow. ready for it than what I was actually getting for the actual fights it was it was in that position but it's like so it's having incredible self-belief that you know I can make it I know I can yeah I've had that blip I've gone off the radar but I know I felt in my heart of hearts I was good enough I've just got to keep working it'll come and, and just yeah. having that just for hey, sometimes there's nothing else to hold on to yeah and that was it really because like, i know everyone's kind of writing me up and the lot well he's old now and he's had a good chance and <laughs> you know but he's never going to come back and as i say you know i i, I approach frank and i was sort of like you know i want to uh know where my career's going yeah and he kind of like looked at me like i, I was being cheeky asking like you know what you know what to do you listen you're a boxer that's all you need to know what else are you going to do well i was a british telecom engineer by trade and so i decided that I didn't want this life, I wasn't going to be dictated to and sort of him ruling a career, it wasn't really a career in my eyes, it wasn't taking me where I wanted to go, so I made a massive gamble and decided to sort of root beating and say, look, you know, I'm going to sit my contract out. Wow. You can't actually do anything to me. 
Yeah. Because I'm not boxing. How, so long, I'm not gonna box how long was that that you had to sit Another 18 months. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, of actually, you know, nothing really. Uh, it was, like I say, I knew what I was doing. I actually yeah. knew what I was doing at the time. Uh, and when you know what you're doing, when you've got a plan, yeah. it makes it easier to keep driving forward. So although I'm going to work at BT now, it's kind of a real change because people have just seen you on Sky Sports and seen you winning titles and here you are uh, pulling the pair of ladders <laughs> off the back of a BT van and working. And, but, you know, it was a bit of a strange one because as a, as a professional, when I started, I was at BT at the yeah. start and then had to leave it because obviously the career just took off and yeah. I had to train full time to go back to being a... A BT engineer again. The first time round was really nice. I liked it because it was quite humbling as well because you'd just been on Sky and then you were fitting someone's line <laughs> yeah. on the Monday after and they're like, I know you, you yeah. know, I've seen you on the telly, you're like, yeah, that was me, yeah, I've had one fight, I've won one fight, whatever it may be. But I think the second time round, only because I knew what I was doing, uh, yeah. it was kind of embarrassing really. It was like, you know, I thought your boxers earned loads of money and, you know, and they yeah. don't realise that the pitfalls of the sport, uh, it is a really hard sport, it's very unforgiving, it's not yeah. like any other sport. In terms of a football match, your team can do absolutely rubbish uh, and lose the one week, but then gain a bit of uh, respect and credibility the week after we box. And unfortunately, sometimes it can take months and years, as it did in my case, yeah. to actually get that back. And I think when I had the break away, and I say I was working at BT, and uh, we had a big article in the boxing news at the time uh, Will it ever be Wayne's World again? Uh, which done me a massive favour, really. Yeah. Which was kind of orchestrated by myself, and just to let people know out there that I wasn't with Frank anymore. There was a free agent yeah. uh, and I was open to offers kind of thing and, and, and that's exactly what happened and so I was then getting phone calls coming through asking people, you know, you've said on the article Wayne, you'd love to box in Birmingham uh, and then it was kind of like played down a little bit in some respect. Again, like I was a massive self I knew what I wanted to do, I know I wanted to get back into boxing. Yeah. But I just, you know, I didn't want to look, I was desperate, so I'm not boxing for pennies, you know, let's do this and let's do this right. And also, it gives you the say. Uh, on who you actually want to fight. So literally, I'll be honest with you then, I run my own career then. I wouldn't get tied up with anyone and that stayed that way right yeah. the way to my end of my career. <clears throat> Never ever got managed by anyone, I managed myself. Yeah. So then you come back and now all of a sudden rather than the promoter saying, this is who you're fighting, yeah. I'm saying to the promoter, this is who I want to box. <laughs> uh. But I wasn't cherry picking, yep. I was choosing guys that were there or thereabouts. Ones that would lead me to where I wanted to go. I wanted to get back onto the British title rung, the world title rung. So the guys I was choosing were top five, top ten fighters that were above me in the ratings. Yeah. I needed them more than they needed me, so to speak. So the first one I chose was a guy that I'd boxed, who'd had 15 and lost one at the start of my career, that's when I first joined up with Frank. And every time I seen this guy, it was a close fight. But every time I seen him, well, not him so much, it was more of his trainers were like, you know our boy will beat you. And I thought, you know what, this would be great. First fight back in Birmingham. Let's go for this one. Let's let's put this to bed because all I ever said to the trainer at the time was, if we box now, I'm more experienced, more mature, been in the game a lot longer, I would knock him out. And this was a kid that didn't get knocked out. So they were kind of like, yeah, okay, fair enough. So we made this fight. And my first one back in Birmingham, airs on the back of my neck stood up because it was crazy to be boxing in front of my home crowd. Yeah. Uh, it, it still is today. Uh, without a doubt, it was a smaller arena compared to what I boxed in. I think it held about 1,200 in there. I think we'd sold about eight, 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 nine hundred tickets there. You know, it was literally it was it was all for myself, uh, and that is still today the, the the best memory for a ring entrance I've ever had. Yeah. Because uh, all you could hear on the day, uh, as I was just about to walk into the arena, was "Ow, oh, cock, <laughs> ow, oh, cock," and it was it was ended right, and it was quite yeah. a small arena, so you can imagine. Yeah. It was crazy, and I just remember thinking at the time, uh, I had to really compose myself. I really did because it was a, it was a real, it was a, a strange moment, and uh, I thought I was just running out there and going, oh, "That's <laughs> great." I'm back in Birmingham, but uh, I composed myself, and I thought, "I no, don't look. You've got a job to do. You know, these yeah. kids here to do a job." So, uh, hood up, hands on my trainer's back. Let's get out there. Let's do this job, and I'll I'll, I'll celebrate after the fight, kind of thing, uh, which I did 56 seconds later. Oh. <laughs> uh, and it was a great way to get back into <clears throat> into into the boxing scene. It led to a British title shot for me, uh, where I fought against Scott Dan. Yeah. Uh, and if you're ever doing a boxing trivia quiz, then uh, it's probably one you, could, you you might come across, or one that could be used, I should say, because it'd be the first it's the first ever British title fight that was scored by three scoring judges. Because mm -hmm. before that, it was always scored by the referee. Mm -hmm. So it was the first ever one that was done. Uh, apart from that, that's the only highlight of that fight. <laughs> 
uh, it wasn't a great fight from yeah. me or Scott. I don't think either of us turned up on the day. I expected a totally different fight from mm. Scott. He was someone who'd, who'd got a, a massive knockout record at the time. Yeah. And uh, I think we we went for it in the first couple of rounds. I think I clipped him a couple of times. He clipped me, and I don't think they really fancied the job in terms of trying to knock me out. I think he thought he was going to walk on him one himself. Yeah. The trouble is, he was six foot one, six foot two, possibly I'm five foot nine. Uh, and he used what he should have been using before, which is the jab, and completely changed his plan. My sparring for it was literally a guy that just walked forward, yeah. uh, who I could walk onto big shots, and all of a sudden he went, right, you come to me. Oh, I was like, right. no, I'm in trouble, no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and it made a bit of a dull fight, to be fair. Yeah. He won on points. Uh, I, was, I was still at BT at this time, believe it or not. Oh, right. Trained around it, the story behind that quickly. Uh, I said to BT, look, I've knocked this kid out in a round, I'm just going to do this one fight and then I'm walking. Yeah. I'm just going to do it. I'm walking. Okay, one, fair enough. So, anyway, we got this one fight and I say it was a, a one round knockout. So, I said, British title shot, you're next in line. Okay. So, I went to my gaffer at BTS. He looked up, offered me the British title shot. This will be my last one. I'm going to do this one. It'll be my last one. Because <laughs> I, I, I did love it at BTS. I really yeah. did, to be honest. It was great, as I say. And I like the guys there. I like the job itself. Uh, and it was great. It was customer facing. A lot of people say it was yeah. it suited me down to the ground. So, anyway, uh, he said, well, how long do you want off for this fight? I said, I need about you know, six weeks or whatever just to get myself ready. Okay, fair enough. Well, you can't actually do that now, son. You've had, you know, had a bit of time off, so we can't really give you the time off. So I went on the sick. <laughs> I went on the sick and uh, I trained for it. Uh, I thought, forget it, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Forget it. But I've got to win there because it's going to be on yeah. Sky Sports soon, <clears> so everyone's going to see it anyway. No, I wasn't on the sick and I was actually training. So anyway, literally about a week or so before the fight. I'll be honest with you, I was on fire leading up to it. And about a week before the fight, a guy who was higher than my gaffer rang me up. He was a top man. He sort of said, like, Wayne, listen, be honest with me. Are you training for a fight? I said, well, actually, I am, yeah. I said, have you seen this guy's knockout record? You're not going to employ me if I'm in a wheelchair. So I said, you know, I want to make sure that I'm... I'm, I'm worried about my safety. Yeah, better. of course, I want to make sure yeah. I'm, I'm 100% on it. <clears throat> okay, he said, if I knock him out, I'll be back to work on Monday. Literally. Uh, if it's going to be a tough 12 rounds, then just give me a week off and I'll be back. And I thought I was going to be getting the sack before this, to be fair. Yeah. So he agreed, which totally blew me away. Wow. It also took the edge off the fight. Yeah. Because now becoming like, I've got to win this fight. Uh, I've yeah. got to win this fight, which to like, versus, and I was getting quite a bit of money for it. I'm getting quite a bit of money for the fight, and I've also got my job as well. It kind of took the, the edge off it. Yeah. I knew it wasn't a major issue, so I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. Looking back, it was probably a bad thing. I went back to work after the fight a week later because it had gone 12 rounds. Jumped into my BT van. I was driving to work saying, well, why am I doing this? Yeah. I should be British champion. You didn't put your heart and soul. I'm feeling bad. I actually bought, a, I remember going out and buying a brand new BMW car with the mono. Just blowing the lot on a car. Wow. Not really caring. And, and I'm thinking that's going to make me feel better. Yeah. For, for losing the fight. And they're thinking, I've got a nice car, it's great. So anyway, I... Uh, I drove, it, I drove the, from my house basically to, into the yard, said to the guy in the yard, the gaffer at the time, uh, I'm quitting. He said, if you go now, you'll never walk through the doors again, you know that, don't you? Really? I said, yeah, I said, I do. I do. <laughs> Big decision. It was. It was a massive decision at the time, and again, it's about that self-belief. I yeah. believed in myself. A lot of people at the time thought at that time I was, what, 20, uh, well, I weren't actually 29, I was in my 30s, early 30s. You're too old. It's gone. Yeah. It's finished, son. You know, it's been a good career though, well done. Yeah. But no, for me, I still felt there was still fire in the tank. I could still do a job. Uh, and thank, thankfully, you know, that's what I went on to do. So I gave the keys back in, walked out, and I was basically a, a professional boxer, full-time professional boxer, with nothing, no sponsorship, no nothing. <laughs> like, this has to work. Yeah. Uh, and I've used the same mentality in business today. You know, there was there has been really tough times in business Yeah. where there's been no money in the pocket. And you've just got to believe. Uh, and that's kind of what I did, you know, I've, I've cracked on with that same sort of belief. I've done it out of passion because I wanted to do it, I wanted to be a fighter. I yeah. wasn't interested in the money. The first title fight, just quickly, I went over that, the first title fight that I ever had, I uh, when I boxed far now, they bought this fight up for me and they said, like, you know, you've got to come back to London for the training, I've got you this place, so it's on the Ricky Hatton and the Cardi's fighting Vince Phillips, you're going to be chief support. Wow, Emmy and Arena, wow, brilliant. Great, so you need me back in London, yes, okay, great, brilliant, right. Putting the phone down, whoa, whoa, whoa. what's what's the matter? And said, Well, don't you know what you're getting paid? I said, You know what? I don't really care what I'm getting paid, I just want that title and I want to win the fight. And my mentality stayed like that. 
bar my last three fights. Yeah. The whole career stayed with I'm doing this because I love it and any money is a bonus. Yeah. And it wasn't a necessity. The money wasn't a necessity. I loved the sport. You've got to love the training. You've got to love getting in the ring. Uh, <clears throat> the whole the whole lifestyle I absolutely loved. I thrived mm. on it. I didn't care about the money. People will tell you when I was boxing, you wouldn't hear me about it. I wasn't uptown. I wasn't interested in the drink. I wasn't interested in uh, picking myself up in the clubs and, and, and pubs and whatever else, you know. Uh, I was a family man, I had a young family, you know, uh, I was more interested in just being in the gym and just being the best I possibly could yeah. and making myself the best possible fighter. I also know with age not on my side, uh, there's going to be young books coming through as well and I've got to keep, you know, stay sharp, stay yeah. on the game and, uh, and mature enough really uh, to take the sport 110% serious. Uh, so yeah, as I say, you know, right the way through there, uh, through them early days uh, and then starting up myself and being told at the time, I'm not really going to go anywhere, to then go on to win the English, the British, the Commonwealth, and then challenge for the IBF yeah. world title. And I'm winning uh, an international title away from that as well, to go on and win four titles and so forth, and then try to challenge for the IBF after being told and being written off just before that wow. resurgence. Uh, <coughs> just goes to show the, the truth. But the great thing about that is that even when I had the British title and that, I had it, I wasn't tied to anyone. Yeah. So it was great because you can sort of sit there after the fights and say, like, this is where we're going to go. Yeah. Uh, as I say, it started changing for me. The pinnacle for my, my career uh, and the greatest win for me was against a guy called Howard Eastman. Yeah, I remember that fight, yeah. Uh, <coughs> ruled the division. Yeah. For what is it, must have been over 12 years. You know, Rob McCracken, I mean, lots of people, you know, uh, one of his fellow brummies, Rob McCracken. I remember thinking that when I got in the ring, to be fair, he's beaten and brought me up. I've got to, I've got to even the score here. <laughs> uh, and Rob was funny because Rob was in his corner, Rob was his trainer, but. Uh, yeah, Howard was just like, I remember watching him in the early parts of my career because he was at Panix Promotions and a lot of the time I was on the undercard uh, and he was the chief support and I was kind of watching him and you're like thinking, Frank, uh, Frank's looking at me and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll stay away from him for a bit longer, you know, he's, uh, he's <laughs> he was a good customer, you know, yeah. to be fair, I think just, I was the first British fighter to beat him and he lost to Abraham's Joppy and I think Bernard Hopkins, uh, I think that was his only defeat. Oh, that's good company uh, to be in there. They're, all yeah. they're all world class and they're all world title fights, you know, so. It was different class, so that was a pinnacle. I put a lot into that fight. I really did. Uh, it was a hard, tough training camp. Twelve rounds where I think in the tenth and even the last round he caught me with some shots and dazed me a little bit. He was dynamite in either hand and he could knock you out any time, which he proved. He knocked out Richard Williams in the fight before that in the eleventh round. He could carry, you know, carry a big shot right into the the, the, the death of the fight really. So that was really the pinnacle for me. I was always like looking up at uh, looking up to Howard and what he'd achieved. Uh, and he was a, a fantastic fighter, and so I put loads into that fight, and I trained harder than I ever trained before. And I knew I needed to be at my best, absolute best, to beat him. And thankfully, I did. And I don't think there was any question that I beat him, and I beat him soundly enough. The thing is, for me, then part of me died. Uh, I think that was really the pinnacle. Don't get me wrong, it, but it, it was mad because I was coming back to fight Scott Daniel had to then fortunately retire with a back injury. Yeah. And then Howard Eastman went right after the belt. Then I was like, great. I give my job up to come back to fight Scott Dan, and now Howard Eastman stepped in and Dan's injured, and I'm yeah, I wasn't really yeah. keen on that one at the start, but it's here now. And we've done this. I had to come through Steve Bendel on the way with the English title. Yeah, uh, great fighter Steve yeah. was as well. You know, yeah, and the amateurs true, as well. Yeah. You know, really great <laughs> fighter. Uh, but yeah, it's come through Steve and, and so forth. And they kept putting obstacles in the way, and it just made me more determined. So yeah. by the time I got there, although Dan had been injured and Howard had only just got the title, I did not care. It was yeah. like no way. I've gone through everything on this. I give my job up because I believed I was good enough to be British champion. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter who's there. I don't care who's there. It could be King Kong. I'm gonna win it. You know. And that was the kind of mentality I wanted with Howard. And and I beat him. And then I think the 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 joy I got from being you know the British King if you like and beating one of my heroes if you like in, in Howard. Uh, it was I wouldn't say it was downhill from there because obviously the Arthur Abrams fight came, but it was very short, it was only in December, I won in the end of September, and yeah. in December, literally, no time off from the gym, a few days off, and then it's back in, quarter zones in my elbows, and I'm not saying if I'd got in there 100%, I would have beat Arthur, I'm not that stupid, you know, he's a great fighter, but I didn't get in there anywhere near, I got in there, that was the first time in my career I got in for the money. Right. You know, and that's no discredit to, to, to Arthur, <coughs> he was an unbeaten fighter at the time, and no one wanted to touch him, but yeah. it was purely for the money. Uh, and I sat down in my trainer, you know, and he sort of said to me, you know, Wayne, you know, you've had a good career, you're not getting any younger. I think I was 35, 36 at the time. Wow. You haven't got a long left. Yeah. 
you've got to take these opportunities sometimes that Howard thought that he was going to blast me away and then fight half right. So we got in there for the money and we did. But you know what? Something really changed in me that day by doing that fight. I hated every moment of training. Hated every it's moment. It's a different mentality, isn't it? When you, like you were saying, never chase the money. Like you don't chase the money with the sharp or the boxing or anything else. You always follow your passion, and that, that's really interesting. The, the next question I wanted to ask is, how important is the mental game? Getting that right for for not just you know boxing, but your business as well, because you you've done lots of different things, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, it's it's for me. It's it's all about the way you see yourself. Yeah. More importantly. Uh, don't worry about how others see you. I never worry about how others see me. That's important. You know, think, uh, yeah. believe in yourself, do the right things, like you say, honest integrity. Uh, live by them rules. You know, uh, treat everyone how you'd like to be treated yourself. Yeah. You know, if there's something you're doing that you wouldn't like, then don't do it to someone else. So, uh, the mental picture, having that mental belief uh, and believing that anything's possible. I've, all, I don't know. I've always had that. I mean, a lot of people. <laughs> Sky pulled out of the Howard Eastman fight because they're like, Wayne's going to get knocked out in four rounds. I'm like, I'm on it. All right, fair <laughs> enough. You know, and it was seen as like yeah, that was what was going to happen. But yeah, uh, the, the self belief I have in myself uh, that I can achieve. Yeah. and do anything that I put my mind to. The thing is, I'm never really, I always give 150%. 150%, 150%. I always want to do more than anyone else would ever believe I could do. Yeah. You know, it's that, I don't know why that's, it's just inbuilt. Is that uh, a boxing thing or has that always been with you, do you think? I think it's, uh, my, my, my dad, to be fair, yeah. instilled a lot of this in me. You know, there was a lot of times where I probably looked a million dollars while I was boxing in the amateurs. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of the reason why I was doing the boxing was because because of my dad, who, who passed away in a car accident, unfortunately, when I was, you know, he was like coming back to sort of prove I was as good as what he said I could be. Mm -hmm. But he'd always kind of set me these little targets. And I could box a million dollars and you'd say, Nick, you come you go, Wayne, that was absolutely brilliant. Mate, you're going to go all the way, this, that, and the other. And I'd jump in the car and my dad and I was going, you know, daddy go. It was all right, but you know, you got caught in that first round. <laughs> you know, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. I, could, I knocked him out in the first round, dad. Yeah, but you know, when you come yeah. out, you got caught. So it was always, try. it was like, we, he was a, he used to do long distance running. So uh, he'd set me out on these runs with him every now and again. And he, I would say, he, he put a lot of the, the stuff that's in me today, really. I thank him for that. Yeah, but he'd say to me, look, I've, I've put some change in my pocket, son, because you're probably going to need to get the bus on the way. You might be able to last this run with me. <laughs> And he'd take me for a run. I was like, I, I used to run the cross country at school near off every uh, yeah. long distance was my thing. And it's because my dad used to set me on these long runs and I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not giving up. Yeah. I'm going to keep going. I'm probably running like six <laughs> miles and I was only like nine or ten. Do you wow. know, it was crazy, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, and so he'd give me that. So he was always trying to do more, always trying to impress me, dad. And I, sp I suppose yeah. still today, I've still got that mentality. He's instilled that Because I know he's like, you know, hardiness. it doesn't matter how good yeah. you've got, there's always better. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not saying that I'm always striving for perfection yeah. and I know you can't get perfection it's impossible for anyone yeah. to get perfection but it doesn't mean you stop trying see yeah. that's where I think a lot of people go wrong because yeah. they don't look at that other side yeah. well you're never going to get it perfect so you might as well just be happy with what you've got Yeah. well no I'm never going to be like that yeah. Because I, I, anything can always get better I had a phrase that said um, strive for perfection but accept excellence yeah. you know yeah. and it's uh it's not bad. So, last question, uh, Wayne, is, um, and this video is hopefully to help inspire people with your career and everything that you've done. What advice have you got for people who are struggling? Like, you've, you've had some struggles in your boxing career and, you know, di different things that you've overcome with this real mental strength that you developed. So, what advice would you give to people that are struggling with their goals, with boxing, with sport, with anything like that? They might be going through a dark time. Lots, lots of times when it's been tough, I would say, uh, obviously, it's just having that. You, you have to have that, that, that self-belief, that faith in yourself. No winter lasts forever, as they say. Yeah. You know, no winter lasts forever. It's always going to get better. The only way it's going to get better is by putting the work in. Uh, having patience, I think, is the main thing. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of trouble is why a lot of businesses and a lot of stuff that goes down, obviously now with the, the stuff that I do today with the, the box clever coaching business, with the shop. I mean, I'm a kid who left school with nothing, no qualifications mm -hmm. whatsoever. Uh, but never been shy of putting the graft in, never been shy of working hard uh, and having patience. Yeah. I will always get there. And I think it's having that enormous belief that you will actually get there. Yeah. No matter how long it takes. It could take me six months. It could take me six years. Yeah. But I will get there. And I'll always get what I, what I started out to, to want to achieve <clears> at the start. And I think that's where most people go wrong. 
uh, and it's also not being afraid to change direction. People are worried about what other people are saying. Yeah. So I've had things in, in business where and business was all new to me and I've had to learn as I've gone along. Uh, but people are afraid of changing direction. You can't, you know, don't, don't, you know, you've put so much effort and time into this direction. You can't surely change it now. That would be absolutely crazy. That'd be, look, what will people think if I try and change it? Don't yeah. worry about what people think because it's not going to affect their life. It's going to affect yours if yeah. you don't change it. Sometimes you can keep flogging a dead horse, so to, so to speak, yeah. where you keep going down a path that's not working. And then there's the other side where you've just got no patience, uh, where you just, this should be working. Yeah. Jeez, I should have been, you know, on my time plan, I said within three years yeah. I'd do this, yeah. this and this, and it hasn't worked. Yeah. So I'm just going to give that up. I'm going to go and work for so and so, or do this, or do that. And it could be the same in the boxing career. As I say, in my career, really, you could really say about three and a half years was lost. Yeah. And yeah. to still achieve what I achieved, yeah, was through belief. And there's many people that would have just said, you know, that's it. I've had enough. Exactly. Not Don't get back. me wrong. There's been many a times. And I'm not going to lie. I'm like anyone else where you just think, oh, this is this is this yeah. isn't working. And that's when really you've got to really question why I'm actually doing it. Yeah. And every time I came back to, because I love it. Yeah. I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah. I love the challenge. <clears throat> I love being involved in the sport of boxing. Uh, I love a challenge more than anything, but I love, I love the sport of boxing. And I think if you're passionate about whatever you're doing, I yeah. think that's the main thing. Yeah. You've got to have a reason why. Everyone's got a reason why they're doing it. And if your yeah. reason why you're doing it is because you just want to become a millionaire, yeah. you're never going to become Not a millionaire. Enough. You're going yeah. to drop, it's going to fall. Yeah. Because when times get tough, you're going to walk because yeah. you're chasing for the wrong reasons. If my reason is because I want to just, I want, I want to be happy in life. That I'm always, I'm, I'm looking to, I want to be happy in what I'm doing. I want to get up every morning and say, I've ne there's not one morning I don't come to work. I'm thankful that I've managed to create enough to, to come and work for myself and nobody even to answer to. But I never get up any day of the week and say, oh, I don't fancy going in. I mean, yeah. I was in Bank Holiday Monday, Mrs. going, what are you doing? I'm like, coming and open the shop. I'm going, well, why not? Yeah. I'll open the shop, Bank Holiday Monday. I'll, I'll come in, I'll come in Sunday yeah. if I can. I run my son's football team, so I can't. Yeah. But, you know, I'd come and open any day of the week. I haven't got a problem. I love coming into the store. Uh, I love going to the gym. I go to the gym every night. I'm in the store. People say, how are you doing that? I'm in the store all day. I'm yeah. in the gym all night. Wow. But I love it. Yeah. I love it. You need a break? No, I don't. <laughs> I feel as fresh as anything, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, it's not... Uh, it doesn't knock me back. I never feel jaded. and it feels tired. You get the odd time when you're feeling tired, when, you, when you've been up Liverpool, when you're one of your boxers there and you've got to come and open the shop <coughs> early in the morning. But yeah. in general, I'd say definitely uh, passion for yeah. what you're doing, for me, is number one above anything, really. Yeah. Uh, always do something for passion. Uh, see any money you make as a, as a bonus, yeah. not a necessity. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, if you put the work in and you work extremely hard at something, uh, then the money will follow anyone. Yeah. It's hard not to. It's yeah. hard not to. You know, you, you, you get rewarded in that way. But, uh, yeah, for me, as I say, I think the thing that's kept me going. And, and, and then it's just looking for new challenges. That is the only thing I would say that's bad about me. Uh, and then I've probably <laughs> spoke to a few people that probably said the same thing, a similar, is that when I accomplish a goal, uh, then... I want to move on to somewhere else, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't help that. I think yeah. I'll, I'll be like that till the end of time. No, I'll kind of get it where you want it to go, and you're like, yeah, that's yeah. it. Now. What can I do now? See what's out there, but yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Wayne, thanks a lot for your time, buddy. Appreciate Good that. Work. So, if anyone wants to know where your shop is, it's Ringside Boxing, Mad Dog Boxing, yeah. uh, Sutton Coalfield. Sutton Coalfield, Birmingham, yeah. Birmingham. Brilliant. Okay, thanks a lot for your time. No, no, it was, no Cheers. Brilliant.